This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus chapter 26, verses 26 to 37. Also, make crossbars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west at the far end of the tabernacle. The center crossbar is to extend from end to end at the mountain. Make a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen, with cherubim worked into it by skilled hands. Hang it with gold hooks on four posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold, and standing on four silver bases. Hang the curtain from the clasps, and place the Ark of the Covenant Law behind the curtain. The curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Put the atonement cover on the Ark of the Covenant Law in the most holy place. Place the table outside the curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and put the lampstand opposite it on the south side. For the entrance to the tent, make a curtain of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen the work of an embroiderer. 
Make gold hooks for this curtain and five posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold and cast five bronze bases for them. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus chapter 26 verses 26 to 37. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil.
You should get time with them, to nurture them, to teach them God's way. Because according to the Bible, in Proverbs, if we teach our children in God's way, they will never depart from it. Let us teach them God's way. That will help us so much. From there, we come to O. O here stands for open up. You should open up of the children. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, God says that all secret thing belongs to God. But all those things that God has given to us, you should teach our children. And this is also said in the same way in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, that you should teach our children. You should open up to them whatever they need to know. You should open up to them. I was once a student in a school in Kumasi, a certain part of Ghana, and one of the students, the first time, he experienced a menses. And some would say he had a period. And when she saw it, because he had had it before, that was the end of it all. The child did not come back to school because the first time she saw blood from her private parts. But if the parents opened up to the child, the child could have learned that, after all, it is part of life. But because she didn't know, that was the first time the child went home and did not continue the school anymore. Who knows? If the child were to be the Speaker of Parliament, because in Ghana, the Speaker of Parliament is a woman. Oh, if this child were to be the president of Liberia, you know Ellen, the president, is a woman. If this woman were to experience that problem, why is Ellen now the president of Liberia? All of us will give the attention to the fact that this woman is doing so well of all that happened there. Ghana, the third in command, is a woman, Chief Justice. And if that woman had the same experience and stop education, To open up to our children, whatever they need to know, let us teach them, especially the sex education. Let us let them know, let us teach them. They will listen to us so that anytime such incident happens or an event comes to her life or his life, he'll be able to know. Even some boys, when they go to school for the first time, especially uh, secondary school or high school, when they go there and they're having their bath, some may even think that ah, they will look at their private parts and see some are small, some are big. So they begin to compare. And some may even think that they are sick. Parents, it's up to us to let them know that all human beings are not the same. Even our fingers are not the same. Some are tall. So our private parts should be. Whatever you need to open up to them, you should do so. By so doing, our children should have rest for their soul and continue to learn very well. The next one is P. P stands for or represents pray. Pray. As parents, you should be prayerful. You should pray with our children when our children are with us. You should pray for them when they are not with us. Like Job. Job pray for his children even when they are not available or they are not with him. You pray for them and he will pray with. And that even God said, this man I love so much. And one of the qualities of Job was the fact that he was prayerful. Not only prayerful, but he prays for his children. Parents, let's pray for our children. And Jesus has been praying for us. He prayed for Peter. And he also praying for all of us. So you should pray with them. Also pray for them when they are not with us. You should also pray on. When you pray on the child, there may be a special problem with the child. Let us pray on that issue. And God, once I went to a camp meeting, in the western part of Ghana. And there was a parent who brought her male child. It was about 25 years or more. And this child of the woman was urinating on the mat, which is not the best. That is a special thing as parents should pray on. And when we do so, God in his mercy will save the situation for us. Nobody can pray for or with your child more than the parents themselves. God is our father. And the fatherhood of God makes the brotherhood of men possible. And since God is our father, and as parents, in a way, we are representing God as far as our children are concerned. And since God prays for us, Jesus prays for us, the Holy Spirit prays for us, let's also pray for our children. Let's pray with them. Let's pray on them anytime there's a special issue with them. And let's also pray over. We pray over our children by laying hands and blessing them. At times you can tell your children that... If there is any pastor in my house, a teacher, and any good person in there, this should be my child. 
lay hands on them, lay hands over them by way of praying, giving them words of encouragement, words of blessing. And that is what Abraham, the father of faith, did. He prays, he prayed over the children by way of uh, blessing them. Let's look at one that he prayed for. Jacob, he prayed for Jacob, and Jacob has become Israel. And you know the implication of what I'm saying. Parents, shouldn't forget about the father should pray with our children, pray for them, and over them. Kill is a lesson letter. That is, you should quiet our children. Here, I'm saying you should be in control. Forgiving is still in charge. He's in charge of the world. So our parents, whatever we need to do, you must let our children know that we are in charge. At times visitors may come and my children may be misbehaving. And parents, we are there. And if the children may not fear to continue to do what they are doing, then parents, we are not doing what we are supposed to do as far as God was is concerned. Let's be in charge. Let's be in charge. That is the end of our series for this time. We've seen today that we should motivate our children, that we should also nurture them in God's way. You should open up with our children. Let them know whatever they are supposed to know. And also pray over them by way of laying hands and blessing them. Pray on them when there is a special issue with our children. Pray for when they are not with us. And should also pray with them. And parents, we should also quiet, be in charge. And uh, I think that is what we are supposed to do. We want to end here and continue our series of parenting next time. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for your attention. My name is Bright Oseyebwa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.